In this episode, Nick Shelton, world-dominating introvert, and I came up with a couple of sketches. <clears throat> so I imagine you in second grade start asking the other, uh, the little girls around the, the playground if, if they'd like to marry you. <laughs> okay. I love the idea of you just observing people, yeah. being very blatant about it, having them as as they go different places. Notice like that's the same guy from the restaurant, right? <laughs> that's the same guy. The person who's getting into doing security just to have the pistol whip. Experience. <laughs> so which one did we pick? You'll find out right now on it's a sketch comedy podcast show. Welcome to Sketch Comedy Podcast Show, where I, Stuart Rice, invite interesting people to have intriguing conversations and then improvise a comedy sketch based on what we talked about. It's the only show like it on the internet. Sorry about being so slow releasing episodes. I didn't realize people were still interested in this show. Then all of a sudden, I check the internet and I'm on a couple of top 20 lists for 2021. I figured I should probably release some new episodes then. This episode is perfect for the beginning of the year. You know that feeling you get when you walk into a room, maybe it's a party or other gathering, and you don't know anyone there, and you start to feel the walls pulling you closer until your back is against it? Or maybe there's that dog or cat around that you decide would be a better conversational companion than any of the humans in the room? What about a room filled with people you do know? What about a room with one other person? If you still find yourself shying away from others, you might be an introvert. This episode's guest completely understands where you are coming from. Nick Shelton is a world-dominating introvert. What does that mean? It means that despite having what would be considered crippling social anxiety and feeling drained being around people, Nick has found a way to overcome it, and better yet, he can help you if you have similar issues. He wrote a book so that you can figure this out for yourself called An Introvert's Guide to World Domination. He even has a worldwide network of introverts. Wild! We talk about Nick's five engagements and two marriages, the worst lines to use at a party, how to figure out if you are an introvert yourself, what to do with a masseuse who likes your feet a little too much, and how to watch people in public places without being creepy. Look, it's hard to do primary research for a book. Then we record a sketch. This guy is really starting to creep me out. And now, my conversation with Nick Shelton, world-dominating introvert, with really nice feet. Hey, Nick, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me. It's an honor and a pleasure. It is for me, too. Nick, I've got a question to ask you. Okay, what do we got? What makes you interesting? What makes me interesting? Well, let's see. I, I think uh, one thing that people have said is very interesting, even though I don't know why it is, is I've been engaged five times and married twice. And I'm not married You're right now. You're engaged five times? Yes. And married twice. All right. Yes. So three of those engagements, did they say did they say yes at some point? So, yes. Yeah, so so all of the engagements, yes. Yeah, so five times they said yes. Yes. So I was had five yeses. I didn't have any no's on engagements. So I'm a hundred percent for engagements. And then two of those engagements turned into marriages that did not last. So, okay. but people, I think people think it's interesting for some weird reason that uh, someone would get engaged that many times. I guess I'm just a romantic, but I don't are think you? it's interesting at all. Well, I, it is kind of interesting. So are you a fast engager or are you like, hey, we've been tolerating each other's existence for three months. Like, let's do this. <laughs> or... or <laughs> What, what is I would say that, yes, I'm I'm quite a fast engager. Not anymore. I've learned from this. And now I would say I'm an extremely slow engager. But there was a time where I felt like uh, I was a romantic and I wanted to, you know, 
all these fairy tales and stuff and and movies they kind of brainwash me i guess i don't know and so and i i fall in love easily or i used to at least and so i'd say hey this seems like a good deal to me let's go ahead and lock this in and sure, uh, absolutely I, any uh, any stories as to and you don't have to share this but <laughs> any stories about like those engagements and why they stopped was there anything interesting that happened there uh nothing too noteworthy just uh either you know, one of them <laughs> ran off with another dude. You know, that's it's, <laughs> oh, it's no, kind of that's the worst. That's kind of interesting, I suppose. But uh, you know, I think in hindsight it was better because now that guy is married to her, and it doesn't seem like he won. It seems like I won by her running off with that guy. Hey, that's so. a you know, when someone runs off with someone, you always dodged a bullet. Yes. That's my feeling. If someone decided like, ah, I want to be over there instead, you're great because that means you didn't have to go through all the legalities. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah, it was, yeah, so there, there weren't uh, nothing too crazy or bad. I, I think it all turned out and I'm actually I'm friends. I get along really well with all five of those girls and the two ex-wives were really close. I think my two ex-wives were closer now than we were when we were married. So. You know, it I found works out that when once the divorce happens or once the breakup happens or whatever that is, all the cards are on the table. So there's no like hiding the hand and there's no like. So you just kind of it's everything's out there. So you just now, oh, I had that's what that's what I was holding. And yeah. now we can just continue on. And I, I actually like looking at relationships as evolution. Uh, they evolve as opposed to starting and ending. Um, right. You evolve a, re- a relationship and uh, I, 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 someone who was a lover can definitely be a really good friend because that person probably knows you better than anybody. Right. Exactly. I will say that a lot of my exes do not agree with that, so. <laughs> <laughs> yes. but, uh But Nick, that's actually shocking to hear that you were engaged five times because I know something about you that uh, I think you actually want everybody to know is that yes. you're kind of an introvert, aren't you? Yes, I am a definitely an introvert and definitely was also, in addition to that, shy and socially awkward. But I think how that would, how you'd say, well, how would you be engaged that many times? I think it was another part of that would have been I, you know, instead of trying to date everyone all the time, which is hard for somebody that's not trying to get out there and talk to people, you say, hey, someone's right here. I'll just go ahead and just be with this person, then I don't have to go out and try to find another person. So it's just spending the rest of your life with someone that may not be optimal is far less scarier than. (laughs) 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 Yeah. At the time, anyway, it seemed that way. (laughs) Now I know better. All right. So, so, uh, you are, you feel, um, you describe yourself as an introvert, right? Yes. Like I, I'm not, I'm not throwing that on you. That, right. this, this is something you describe yourself. Uh, I absolutely you describe out, myself that way. Yeah. When did you find out that you were, that you had that mindset, that you were kind of an introvert? Well, I didn't really know what it was, but I would say the first recollection was around second grade uh, when I realized, hey, I seem to be a little different than these other kids. So uh, you know, so introversion, it's like when you get your energy from being alone and then you you spend a lot of energy interacting with people and it's really difficult for you. And then on top of that, I was also socially awkward and shy. And I so I felt like uh, an alien who didn't pay attention in their how to blend in with humans class. And then they sent me here anyway. And I said, oh, no, I don't I should have paid attention in that class. And so that's when I knew around second grade is something's different. I need to try to figure this out. But it took a while to get around to figuring it out. Sure, sure. But it sounds like you've done a pretty good job figuring it out. But before we get there, you actually just said something that was really interesting is you separated the socially awkward away from the introversion. Yes. Can you, can you expand on that a little bit? Because I think that's a major area of confusion for a lot of people. Right. So uh, 
People a lot of times think that uh, if you're introverted, then you're naturally also shy, but that's not the case, or socially awkward, and that's not necessarily the case. They're all separate things. And a lot of times they'll complement each other and kind of go to hand in hand, and you'll see where you see one, you'll often see another. But uh, so socially awkward is, yeah, you just socially, you don't know what to do, and you're kind of clumsy in social situations. And then shy, we all know that you. Uh, don't speak up. And then being an introvert is you prefer more alone time or time away from crowds because it's sapping your energy. So uh, that is, it's a little bit different than those other two, but often they all, if somebody has one, they might have the other two things as well. And I had all of those things. You had a full suite. Yes. (laughs) yes. That that skill set. Um, a lot of people are surprised to find out I, I too am actually pretty introverted. I need a lot of the downtime, a lot of the recharge in order to get in front of people. I I'm in the exact same boat. Um, and the social awkwardness, maybe not to this, not to a great extent, but it's definitely there. What, if you have an example of like a time, the social awkwardness took over and it just, it just a, a good highlight for you in. You did said something or did something where it was just like a little cringy. I think that's what the kids would say these days. It's a little cringy. Yeah, I I know there's it's hard to there's been so many that it's hard to pick one out. But the one that comes to, to mind right now is I remember, man, this was many years ago. I think this was back in the the late 80s, probably 1989 or 1990. And. There was uh, my friend took me over this house where he's like, hey, there's going to be some girls. Let's go meet some girls. And we were all hanging out and I and they're saying, hey, so what's going on? How are you doing? And then I couldn't think of anything to say. I don't know what people say to each other. So then I started talking about the weather and, <laughs> you know, everyone looked at me like, what's wrong with you? And then I was, I don't know. And then. Yeah, it just got really strange after that. And then nobody really wanted to talk to me. And then I was just kind of sitting there. And then that made it even more awkward because then I said, well, what am I supposed to say now to try to recover from this weather thing? And I couldn't think of anything. So, yeah, it was really bad. And then later my friends teased me about that for for a long time. They'd be like, hey, so how's that weather? You know, what do you think about the weather? You know, so because that's something that young people don't normally concern themselves with no especially when they're talking to like what enters into your mind is i've got to fill this space right like i've got to fill the space with some sort of words but i don't know this person and i don't what's the most tamest what is the easiest thing to bring up we all experience the weather right yeah that's good that's bad um yeah that's not a great that's not a uh you know i wouldn't write a rap song about that one (laughs) that's what i would say (laughs) but uh uh, we've all been there i think um now as an adult have how is the uh introversion the social awkwardness how has that affected you in like your career or in your job or you know kind of pull us through like nick's life like when you were because i know you you served in the military correct yes yeah and so it wasn't really an uh, as much of an issue there because that's i had already started to navigate my way through it and uh through the military and then after that is when i really started getting it down and and mastering how to actually make it more of an advantage so i would say in my career i've never really had uh, to experience that because I've been I've ar- already had hacked it by then and been able to move through the system. But I'd say earlier on in earlier jobs, then, you know, you see people get the promotion that you say, I should have got that or right. see people get opportunities that you think that you should have gotten and you get passed up because they're they might not know as much as you and they might not be, be as qualified, but they step out into the spotlight. And then so they have that attention on them. And so naturally it goes to them. Well, if you're uh, flying below the radar and, uh, you know, laying low, trying not to be noticed, then naturally you get passed up for stuff and you say, hey, that should have been mine. And so that those types of things were happening, uh, not only 
in the workplace, but also, you know, just with opportunities or with parties, no one's inviting you to a party if they don't know who you are and you're blending in. And if you're, once again, if I'm trying to uh, talk to some girls or something, are they going to go out with a guy that doesn't say anything and he's standing over in the corner? Or are they going to go with the guy that's, hey, that's the life of the party? And right, I can tell you it's the life of the party guy. That walks in, yeah, yeah. Walks in right. with, the, you know, the cap backwards and the case of beer and is like, yeah, right. well, let's do shots, you know. <laughs> everybody wants to talk to. Right, um, so and that that translates over into, yeah, the workplace and everything. So I uh, was a victim. I suffered of that from that, seeing that. And then I said, hey, I would like to be a part of, you know, being able to be seen and heard as well, but I don't want to compromise myself, my my energy and uh, myself to be able to do that. So I had to, I looked for resources and I couldn't find any that spoke to people like us. So then I had to figure it out myself and then create those resources myself to help other people like us. Okay. So do you mind talking a little bit about these resources? Because you actually, and we'll put this out there, you compiled all of these resources for people to be able to uh, get them, correct? So they yes. don't have to go through the torture of like developing these resources. Right. You wrote a book, uh, The Introvert's Guide to World Domination. Yes. Yeah. And, uh, uh, it's delightful. But thank why you. don't you give... Um, give us some of these like are they life hacks like how would you describe them well so i would say that uh so a lot of stuff that's out there it's it's pretty much talking to uh like normal people and so i said well that doesn't apply to me and then it also starts you somewhere in the middle it doesn't start you at the beginning you say hey what what if i am very basic beginner what do i do and so I had to go out and just observe people. So I would go out to restaurants, table for one, sit there, watch other people at the other tables and see how they uh, interacted. And then I'd watch groups and I'd just go out to places and just observe people. Because I think a, a superpower of, of introverts and shy people is observation. So I'd sit and observe people and I would see what seemed to be working, what seemed to be not working while just watching people. And then I would say, OK, not well, let me try all, this. by the way. The most non creepy thing I've ever heard. I didn't have a scowl on my face while I was doing it. I was, uh, and I didn't have binoculars or anything. I would just sit there to enjoy my dinner and I would just kind of notice <laughs> there was no newspaper held up that I'd kind of peek over. So I was <laughs> caught holes in the, in the eyes of the front page. <laughs> right. Sure. Oh, so it was very casual, I assure you. It wasn't in a. Uh, uh, I don't think anyone would notice. And then I started going out and, and saying, well, what if I do this? What if I do this? And so I would just try different things. And then what worked, I would kind of build off of that. And then once I everything started coming together, then I, I kind of organized it. And I said, okay, now let me do more of this and build my social circle. So I was able to get a very high level international uh, network of, uh, you know, uh, friends, colleagues, and associates. And then all my friends started saying, how do you do this? I want to do this too. Because it, it opened up a whole world of cool stuff uh, for me to be able to be around people that brought out the best in me, uh, that uh, could be like mentors, people that uh, were doing cool stuff. I get invited to a lot of luxury events and people were like, well, how are you? How are you yachting? And I'm like, oh, yeah, because, you know, one of my friends has a yacht and he didn't want to go out by himself. So, you know, I'm there, too. You know, that sort of thing. And so people wanted to know how to do it. So then I said, well, let me put together how it's done from the very beginning and save people a lot of time. And so I wrote the book, An Introvert's Guide to World Domination, to show how to upgrade your life and lifestyle through building real solid connections with people. That's amazing. Um, and now this network that you have, this worldwide network, is it a network of introverts? Because that seems like an uh, oxymoron. <laughs> <laughs> right. So some of the people are introverts, but then there are some. So it's all types of people. So some people are really over the top extroverts and some people are very quiet. And it's just a whole spectrum of, of different people that I've uh, managed to 
to build relationships with and uh, become really good friends with. And it, it makes all the difference. And I think that, you know, in life, uh, more than anything, it's our relationships with people that are really the, the true, true wealth. And if you and like, you know, we have this, uh, a lot of people out there are suffering from depression. And I find that if you have really solid, awesome relationships, usually it's, it's a lot harder to be depressed if you have like a really great support system around you than if you don't have that. It, that's absolutely true. I actually had a show a couple months back where I talked to uh, a guest who can, he's a suicidal su- uh, superhero, but, um, but he talks about how that's what's kept him alive is having that network of people and being able to, cause, cause we need people, right? Like that's the, right. the human, it's part of the human condition is that we need other people. We need to have that other human contact. Um, you just need less of it and you need to recharge in order to be out there with it. Right. I can go out there, do it big. And then I say, okay, now I'm going to need some time. And yeah. And yeah. So when one of the things that I find fascinating that I mentioned earlier is that when people see that, cause somebody might say, well, you have two divorces. You're going to tell me about building great relationships. But I say, Hey, I have great relationships with my ex-wives. We are we are great. And they will endorse me and say, yeah, he's the best. You know, we're just not married anymore. But uh, yeah, I have I I can communicate well and build these great relationships and show other people how to do it as well. So you don't have enemies floating out there. You can have, you know, at least some friends, you know, some friends. I actually had on a dating profile. I had all of my ex-girlfriends write like a review for me. <laughs> I had that as my dating profile on OkCupid for a while. How did it um, do? What's that? How did the profile do? Did it? it uh, okay. Like, okay. I don't know. I'm a guy. So like online dating is impossible. Um, <laughs> so what is a, what is a, like, how does somebody know they're an introvert? Because I think that that's something a lot of people describe themselves as, as introverts. A lot of people like, oh, you know, I, I'm super shy. I'm so introverted. Like, how, how does somebody know? Like, what's, what's a thing that you would, you would say is like, here are the keys. And this is, this is the type of person that should be reading your book. That's a really good question. So the type of person that should be reading my book is everybody can read my okay, book and they can get some that's, value. That's out how of I it. felt about my book too. But, uh, <laughs> that didn't happen, but <laughs> right. Well, cause it has, you know, all these tips for people that anyone can use. And even if you're an extrovert, like I have real estate agents that want that edge over other real estate agents. So they use some of these techniques to, uh, and they're extroverts. They use these techniques to just get that edge over the competition. So the, the book is, has value for anyone who reads it. But uh, for somebody to know they're an introvert, I would say that if you find that, uh, like when you go to a social environment, if there's just, if it's almost like a timer has started and you can only handle so much and then then all of a sudden it's like, I, I need to leave. I need to leave right now. And it's not like uh, you're scared or anything like that. It's just, it's like kind of taking the life out of you. Even if you're having a good time, you say, okay, I'm kind of hitting a wall here. I just need to go somewhere else. And so for me, I don't necessarily have to be alone, but if I'm in a crowd and then maybe I'm, I'm with one person after that, that might help, you know, kind of bring me back around and recharge me a little but it, yeah, it is better if I do, if I am alone. I was at a, uh, an event uh, a few days ago and, you know, we were all as a nice, maybe as a social gathering, the, I think, uh, you know, 30 people uh, and we're all spaced apart properly and all that, but we were uh, right, right. all talking. And then at a certain time, I just figured, okay, well, this is great. And there's still some people I'd like to talk to, but I'm going to leave. And I just left and I came home and I didn't have to go to sleep or anything, but I just needed to just have some time by myself. And I've had friends do the same thing. We've been out when I've been traveling with some friends. One of them, I said, Hey, let's, we just finished some activity. And then I was ready to go do something else. And he said, Hey, I just need, give me half an hour. I just need a half an hour just to sit and do nothing. And then 
I said, oh, I understand that and gave him the half an hour. And so his his tolerance for being in like that, uh, the in the community is even smaller than mine. So his his timer is less than mine is. So I had to recognize that and say, oh, okay, so if somebody is goes out there and then the more they're out there, the more they get, you know, charged up and they're like, we can just, as long as this party's going or this organization, this event, I'll be here. Then that's, that's more of the other side of it. The extroverted side, the introvert side, there's a point where you just say, I, I need to kind of retreat from this and kind of recharge. Oh yeah, God. I think uh, for myself, um, what I found is that I've transitioned from the extrovert to more of the introvert, and I'll be at a party just like you're talking about, having a great time, and I'm like, nope, I'm good. <laughs> that, that tank's filled. I'm out. Right. I'm going to go watch reruns of Rick and Morty or something. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah, so that definitely happens. Um, all right, so there were some questions that you said I should ask. I'm, gonna ask I'm not even going to easily transition. I'm so curious about two of these. For you sure. said, "What so, question should I ask?" So these I are did, some questions. I just this. These are great. So, um, Nick, I got <laughs> my feet are sore. Do you have uh, a story about a time where maybe a uh, foot massage was in play? Yes. Yeah, so I enjoy a good foot massage, just like everybody else. And, you know, so I like to go to different foot massage establishments to see where's the best foot massage. And there was one that is not too far up the street from where I am right now that I went in there. And and this particular time, there was a uh, and, and sometimes it's a man, sometimes it's a woman. It doesn't really matter. But uh, this time there was this uh, this guy had to be like uh what a like an nba player would be so this is a uh a, 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 and i believe his ethnicity I, i'm pretty sure he was chinese um and he was probably like six foot eight or something like that and so <laughs> you had yao ming oh, go ahead. Sorry, go and then, ahead. so then he's he's massaging my feet and then he but the thing is i believe this is where it gets interesting he had seemed like he had a a foot fetish for like my feet because he was like oh your feet are so beautiful you have such nice feet and then he kept kept giving me this really strong eye contact so he just kept staring into my eyes and rubbing my feet and complimenting my feet and i was thinking well this has never happened before you know i've gotten a lot of foot massages i would say over a hundred foot massages and that has never happened so he just kept sitting there just staring me in the eyes and complimenting my feet and rubbing my feet and has thinking well this is quite an experience i were don't even know he was going to propose because you were <laughs> he was already on his knee. situation <laughs> <laughs> right i was just thinking wow i, I said well this because i had if this would have been my first foot massage i would say well maybe this is just how they do it i don't know but right. since i had had many i said i know that this isn't normally how they go this is a little different, but I, I was like, at least I know I have beautiful feet because this guy is at least appreciating my feet. You know? He's a professional. You take the yes. compliment, right? Like you've seen a like, lot of oh, feet. You, and you so, know what you're talking about. <laughs> you have some nice feet. <laughs> yes. <That's, laughs> yeah, I could. Were you uncomfortable? Were you a little uncomfortable? I started getting uncomfortable because the eye contact. I was like, I would like it if he would stop with the eye contact. Yeah, for eye contact, man. Like, yeah, like take a look at my look at my feet and rub there. your feet. Yeah, and so <laughs> it was. I was uncomfortable, and I said, "Well, I probably don't need to continue coming back to this particular no. place." But I still continued to get foot massages at other places. But that's the only time that that had happened, and. I remember I asked people after that, has this ever happened to you? Does this sound unusual to you? And they said, yes, that does sound unusual. Yeah. <laughs> so, I think that's it. Yes. Yeah, so anytime that would be the case, I, that sounds so unusual. Like I, yeah. I would be so uncomfortable. I, I don't care if it was a man or a woman doing right. that. I'd be like, okay, just rub my feet. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. So um, but I'm glad it happened. I mean, so at least I have that experience. So I can be like, no, that 
does happen to people. Okay. It does. It, it happened to you for sure. So yes. You know, for, it's prime, more primary research, much like going and stalking people at a restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> you now know what that's like to have yes. that situation. Yes, I do. Um, do you have any interesting collections? Is there anything that collections? you like to collect? Or is there I, a, a collection that you could think of that... Maybe a, like a sharp connection collection of something. Oh, I see. Yes, because I was thinking the only thing I have a collection of is that. So that's you're talking about the machete collection. Uh-huh. So <laughs> the machete collection, how that happened was apparently I'm really hard to shop for. So my brother had said, hey, you know, you were hard to shop for. So one, I think it was uh, Christmas or my birthday. He just showed up with a machete and said, hey, here you go. You're hard to shop for. So here's a machete. And then every birthday or Christmas, he got me another one. So now I have like all these machetes. And the thing is, so th- that's the only collection I have is because I never just collected anything myself. But he said, if I start getting these for you, then you will have a collection. And then I always know what to get for you because I'll just get you a new different type of machete and just add it to your collection. Now, the problem is that then you have like an apartment full of machetes. And then if I'm on a date and they're like, hey, let's go to your place. Then I have to think, are the machetes up? Are they, (laughs) did I put the machetes away? Because it's going to be weird, you know, if you walk in and there's like, welcome to my (laughs) iPad. 14 machetes laying around. They're like, huh, maybe I shouldn't be, you know. So it's something in my mind where I have to think, okay, don't have the machetes out. Make sure the machetes are put away, and and yeah, so it's it's an odd are thing. They decorative so, machetes, like <laughs> no, they're are just they... they're just uh, there's. You would think when you picture a machete, you just think there's just one type of machete, but apparently there are a lot of different types, and different regions of the world have their spin on the machete. So yeah, there's no shortage of machetes, and I was thinking he's going to run out sooner or later. How many machetes right. could there be? But there are a surprisingly How many different type of bush. Do you have to cut them? Right, like <laughs> right. So, what machete type would work? But evidently, so yeah, not. have the machetes, and you know, and I haven't. I don't think that I I have actually used a machete to chop anything. And I I was thinking, man, I should go out somewhere where there's like some weeds or something and go chop something. But then I, there's another part of me that thinks, what if somebody sees me out doing that? They're like, what's that guy doing? Cause it's not like a common thing here uh, on the hiking trails for a machete no. guy to be out. So yeah, that no, that is certainly not the case. Um, I guess if you get like a hard piece of cheese, <laughs> <laughs> yes, I can. Actually, that, that might be impressive. You bring a girl over and you're like, yeah. watch this. Check Gallagher it with a machete, right? I guess. I don't know. That is a good idea. Yeah, I'm just saying. Um, maybe second date type situation. Not <laughs> right, yeah, not the date, first you bring date. someone home and you're like, here, check out my machete collection. <laughs> yes. Um, exactly. I, yeah, wow. Do, do you have them on display? Or do you? I, they're not on display. They're all no. put away at the moment because I said, it's probably best to just keep them away. And then that way I don't have to wonder if they are out. and. And yeah, I don't, it just seems like it'd just be weird to have a big display thing of machetes unless I could put them behind glass or something. Yeah, some sort of glass. Because like, what's yeah. weirder for somebody if you're, you're inviting someone over, things are going really well, and you're like, you have them on display on your wall. And she sees them and you're like, and she's like, oh, what are those? And you can explain the story, right? Right. Or, or what's worse, like. She's looking around your apartment, opens up a drawer, and sees a whole bunch of machetes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Unprompted, like, whoop, like anxiety goes right. way high real quick. Well, well, you shouldn't go through people's things. That's, 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 that's the, the lesson. Yes, that's that the, lesson. the lesson. Don't go snooping around because you might find a drawer of machetes. <laughs> or you find them in different places in the, play, right. in the apartment, right? Yes. Like, you're like, under what's this under the seat cushions? It's like pull out a machete. It's like what yeah. is going on here? There's one behind the toilet, the bathroom, <laughs> one under the kitchen sink. It's like and I gotta be ready just in case. Machetes. You never know. Yeah, you got it. it might go down. That's right. You never know how bad the mold gets in the bathroom. You have to <laughs> machete to cut through it. Uh, yeah. That's fantastic. And then, um, I you ever had a job where? Um, 
you know, during the training process, like they taught uh, you something really interesting? Oh, uh, yeah. So when I was a many years ago, I was a security guard. And one of the first things I remember, I was like, OK, we're going to it's training day. We're going to train shy, shy and, security guard. Yeah, well, you don't have to really talk to people. You're just kind of. <laughs> That's true. Hanging out. Unless they're doing something and then you're like, right. hey, can you can you uh, never mind. <laughs> Yeah, don't worry about it. You guys know. You, you'll figure it out. Yeah, so I got machetes at the house. I'll, yeah, so, you know, so I was an armed security guard. And so we had our firearms. And, you know, so you have the firearm training and everything like that. But when I had my, my pistol and we're sitting there in the classroom, they said, okay, number one thing, first of all, to start the class, number one, do not pistol whip anybody. And I was thinking, well, that's a weird thing to say starting off. Don't pistol whip anybody. And uh, so I was thinking, I know there's a story that goes along with this because they wouldn't just say don't pistol whip anyone unless somebody had pistol right. whipped someone because I would have never thought about pistol whipping anybody. I'm just, just I'm a security guard standing over there. I wouldn't be like, hey, I should pistol whip somebody. So, you know, do not pistol whip anyone. And also do not fire warning shots is another one. And then I was like, okay, somebody must have fired a warning shot as well. So I, I had to uh, dig, you know, it took a while, but I, I finally heard the story. So the pistol whipping, uh, somebody had uh, somebody, they were chasing them. And when they caught them to teach them a lesson, they decided they were going to pistol whip them. And so they were pistol whipping this person. And then the person took the pistol and shot them. And uh, so <laughs> there you go. That's how that. Uh, That's a pretty what, ineffective pistol. Whip. <laughs> yeah, he must have been pistol whipping the wrong way. Can we have a class on how to properly pistol whip somebody if we right. were <laughs> hypothetically going to do that? And uh, but yeah, this person apparently did it wrong and they got shot. So I would like, say oh, that's not so much a pistol whip as more of it's like a pistol. Uh, what would be like a slow version of a whip, like a pistol nudge? Pistol nudge. Yeah. Uh. You know? yeah. Hey, I like if out. I get hit in the head with a gun by somebody, I'm probably on the floor. So like, yeah. Either so. a really tough skull, or <laughs> really slow, slow whip. You know? <laughs> right. And then the warning shot one, uh, somebody apparently, they were talking to somebody who wasn't listening, so they just figured they would fire a warning shot. <laughs> just shoot a shot in the air. And uh, naturally, that is frowned upon. So, sure. you know. Because the I bullet was, goes up and then goes right, down. It's coming down somewhere. And so, <laughs> uh, so these things, I was thinking, wow, this is interesting. They have to tell us this because, you know, I guess some of my peers need to be told this because they're going to go out and do these things. And so I thought that was very interesting. And, you know, fortunately, I never had to. You didn't have any of those situations. Yes, I didn't have to pistol whip anyone or even think about it or shoot anyone. Yeah, I'm glad that they did have those discussions with people because how many pistol whip situations would they have had (laughs) otherwise? (laughs) They're like, if right. we, we need to make this part of the curriculum because otherwise we're going to lose lots and lots of security guards. Yeah, people would say, hey, you never told us that we couldn't do that. <laughs> you never right. said, you need to say that we're not supposed to do that. Then I would know. I didn't know. But thank you for letting me know. Next time I won't do it. I'll take the written warning this time. <laughs> yes, I'll take the warning. Okay, <laughs> from now on, no pistol whipping. No yeah. pistol whipping. <laughs> All right, Nick, this has been fantastic. We are at that point. It's time to record a sketch. What body part do you think a masseuse would compliment you on? Nick, if people wanted to check out your feet or maybe get in touch with you because they too are introverts and want to break out of that shell, what's the best way for them to do that? All right. Well, they can go to my website, connectedintrovert.com. That's connectedintrovert.com. And that will show you, uh, that'll give you a link to the book. The book is also available on Amazon. So the book is An Introvert's Guide to World Domination, how to uh, become a high level networker and upgrade your life and lifestyle. And so, uh, but connectedintrovert.com will give you resources to the book. And uh, I also have an online video course and also some. A coaching and mentorship program and more stuff coming soon. Absolutely awesome. And when we can start to leave our houses again, 
you can be set up so that you can become a world-dominating introvert as well. And now, our sketch. This guy is starting to creep me out with Nick Shelton. Nick, thank you so much for coming out to dinner with me and inviting me out to dinner. I've wanted to try this restaurant for such a long time. It's a great restaurant. Please enjoy. You can even order the market price stuff, like albino lobster or something. If you want. I have never did market price is always so scary to me. Are you sure? Oh, yeah. Might as well. Live a little. You're with me. I got you. Hey, um, do you notice that guy over there reading a newspaper? I see him. Do you do you know him? No, I don't know him. I, I was trying to see if maybe, like, I dated him once before, but... There's something weird about that newspaper, though. I, oh, it's upside uh, down. Yeah, just ignore that guy and go ahead and uh, pick out what you want. To, maybe we'll get some champagne okay. or something. Oh, do you like cream spinach? It looks like he has a microphone pointed this way. Oh, but it does look like a microphone, though. But Okay, so you don't like the cream spinach? You, know, you can get it if you want. He's, uh, he's taking notes on everything that we're saying. I can tell because every time we say something, he writes something write down. something down? Okay, well, maybe say something, give him something cool to write down, I suppose. I don't know, it is kind of weird. And now that I'm looking at him, he's kind of sliding under the table a little bit. So it's like he knows he's been discovered. I, I see what you're saying now. I, I don't know, should we worry about this at all? We can just uh, get our, our check for the drinks and then we can just go for a walk in the park or something like that. Yeah, do you mind if we go take a walk? Maybe he'll be gone by the time we come back. Oh my gosh, I... Brisk out here. It's a beautiful fall night. I am a big fan of sweater weather. Do you like sweater weather? It is, it is really nice. I used to not be a fall person. I like spring, but you know, just the 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 leaves and just like the the smell of the of autumn and just I don't know the feeling of it. I do like the crisp, cool evenings. It's really wonderful and romantic. So, oh, are are you trying to hold my hand? Oh, uh, you know, just uh, you, you were a little cold, I guess. I just want to make sure that maybe my hand warmth could, uh, you know, help you out a little bit. It does. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. That's probably a really good. Idea. Did you see that? That's that. I think that's that guy. It, it seems like it's the same guy, but he's got like a video camera. Maybe he's a bird watcher. It looks like that guy, but it couldn't possibly be that same guy. But yeah, let's just just ignore that and let's just keep walking. Okay. Oh. Oh, look, this is the playground. When you were a kid, what was your favorite thing to jump around on on a playground? Well, I just like the uh, swings because you try to swing as high as you can and then jump off. I, sorry, I, I, I know I keep doing this, but is he underneath the slide over there now? Yeah, that that's that guy. Try to throw a, throw a rock over there or something? And you're sure you don't know him? Because I don't know that guy. It looks like he's doing like a still life drawing of us. This guy's really starting to creep me out. We might want to find a place where that isn't as public. I did right up the street. We can just go there. And I have some champagne there. We could have some champagne if you like. All right. So home sweet home. Try to keep it clean. But if it's a little bit messy, please excuse the mess. This is such a nice apartment. Yeah. Get settled in. It's a looks looks like the living room. Do you mind if I sit on the couch? Oh, sit away. Enjoy. Something underneath me. Yeah. It's uh, maybe the remote control or something. Metal. Oh, oh, wait. That's one of the uh, (laughs) you're going to laugh. It's one of the (laughs) machetes that uh, my brother gave me as a gift. Your brother gives you machetes as a gift? (laughs) Yes. Yes. So he's a crazy guy, and he thought that it'd be fun to give me machetes. And so I have some machetes. Don't worry. They're just so they're around. They have nothing to be concerned about. You they're like that. everywhere. They're just around. There's a few around, but uh, you know, it's just it's just a funny thing. It's nothing to be concerned about. Oh, you've got a beautiful view of the park out your window. I picked this place because of the view. You know, you can step out there in the mornings and just take in the park, and it's uh, really rejuvenating. We're on the fourth floor, right? Right. I could have swore I saw somebody on a phone out on your patio. Is that a pot? Do you have roommates? No, there shouldn't be anyone out there. Huh, I think you're right. I think there is somebody out there. Should we go out and ask him what he's doing? It doesn't seem like it could really end all that well by asking a guy that's somehow on the fourth floor of balcony that was at the restaurant that was at the park. But yes, maybe if we confront him. Okay, well, why don't you take this machete, and I'll grab a machete, and then we should go ask him. 
excuse me, sir. Uh, what are you doing? What are you doing on my balcony? I, we saw you at the restaurant. We saw you at the park and now you're on the balcony. Uh, can you explain? Uh, I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not just casually observing. You're observing. Yeah. I, I noticed that you guys had like good interactions. They seemed healthy. So I'm doing some research on a book and I'm trying to figure out what healthy interactions look like. You're just stalking people to to see what their interactions look like. That's that is really a creepy, weird thing to do. Maybe you should ask people about it. I'm planning on like completely highlighting you in my book. Do you mind if I just sit on the porch and just watch you guys? And sure, that sounds great. Hey, Nick. Yes. Um, I know you like to collect weird things, but is this a Ziploc bag of human teeth? Thank you for joining us on Sketch Comedy Podcast Show. We hope you enjoyed listening to it as much as we enjoyed making it. If you did enjoy the show, visit SketchComedyPodcastShow.com for even more. Sketch Comedy Podcast Show is protected under a Creative Commons Attribution No Derivatives 4.0 International License.